All right, everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today, we're going to be talking about Bradley's. Bradley's was a chain of department stores located in the United States, mostly in the Northeast region. This company has a rich history, going all the way back to the late 1950s. So, if you're not familiar with Bradley's, well, they were mostly compared to Kmart back in the day. They sold things such as clothing, jewelry, footwear, and even electronics. In the later years, many locations would be positioned beside a chain of grocery stores. This would create a true one-stop shopping experience. Several locations even had cafes, which sold things such as food, drinks, and ice cream. Bradley's would thrive throughout the 70s and 80s, but after years of declining sales and a few failed acquisitions, the 1990s proved to be very challenging. So, it's been a long time since they went out of business. And, of course, most locations have either been repurposed or they've been demolished, but there is a few vacant locations from what I can tell, and they're in pretty rough condition. So, as always, if you do know of an abandoned location, let me know about that in the comments. I would love to check it out. I'm really interested in this one. I have to figure, there can't be too many vacant locations left. So, to get to the beginning, we have to go all the way back to 1958. That year, a small group of investors would meet to discuss a potential business opportunity. Their meeting location was a conference room inside Bradley International Airport, so I think you can see where this is going. Anyways, the first location would open later that same year. It was located in New London, Connecticut, and as you might suspect, it was named after the airport, Bradley's. By all accounts, that first location was successful. And in just a few years, they would grow to six locations. Their quick growth would pique the interest of a company called Stop and Shop. Stop and Shop was a well established company dating all the way back to 1914. However, their main focus wasn't retail, their focus was operating grocery stores, so this would be a challenge for them. Anywho, they would officially purchase Bradley's in 1961, and they had big plans for the company. Right away, they would start opening up new Bradley's locations. Oftentimes, these new locations would be positioned beside existing Stop and Shop stores. This was all done as a convenience for the customer. Basically, people could shop at Bradley's, then walk next door and pick up groceries. This created a true one-stop shopping experience. Throughout the years, this would just become standard for many retailers. I mean, this is pretty similar to a Walmart shopping center nowadays, but I mean, at that time, it was pretty revolutionary. And if you've seen any of my other videos, this is the same strategy that Big Bear and Hearts used. Anyways, their growth would be steady throughout the 60s, and by 1968, there were 52 Bradley's locations. They were bringing in almost $140 million in sales. The company would explode in both growth and popularity throughout the 1970s. Many locations would add snack shops, selling things such as hot dogs, drinks, ice cream, and fries. All of these things would prove to be successful, as by 1974, they were bringing in over $600 million in sales. Bradley's would continue to grow into the 1980s. A large part of their growth strategy was to purchase smaller department stores, and convert them into their own. This was nothing new, as several other retailers were doing the same strategy, other companies such as Ames and Kmart. At any rate, whatever they are doing was paying off, as Bradley's accounted for nearly 70% of the parent company's overall sales, with the other 30% being stop and shop. The company was growing at a pretty steady pace around this time. However, they would start to close their southern stores and focus on the ones in the northeast United States. In 1984, they had 128 locations. In 1986, they had 158. So anyway, things are looking really good for them at this point. They are very much profitable, and they're growing at a pretty good rate. However, the first sign of trouble would come in 1988. That year, there was a hostile takeover attempt by a company called the Dark Group. Stop and Shop would have to act quickly if they didn't want to lose control of Bradley's. So basically, they would start to buy back the company's stock, or that's better known as a leveraged buyout. That deal would be approved just a year later, and with that, the company would once again go private. 
So this created a few issues. First off, they didn't have any public money available to help grow the company. On top of that, Stop and Shop went in debt to make this deal happen. They had to borrow nearly $1 billion. So, for the first time in years, Bradley's was operating in the red. So, all this brings us up into the 1990s. I wanted to mention this, as it was somewhat controversial, and I read a few articles on it. Up until the early 90s, some Bradley's locations would require cashiers to ask for the customer's race, gender, and age when writing a check. As far as I can tell, this policy varied by location. It was said this information was used to help identify a customer if they had written a bad check. I mean, this would make sense, but the customer's name and address is already on the check. By comparison, many other retailers had similar policies in place, but oftentimes they would just ask for the driver's license number or just simply a phone number. So yeah, some customers found this policy offensive, and I can understand why. Anyways, back to the retail side of things. In 1993, they attempted to increase profits by changing up their cafe menu. They would add select menu items from popular places such as Pizza Hut, Taco Bell, and Dunkin' Donuts. In 1991, the company would go public once again. However, later that same year, Stop and Shop would sell Bradley's to a private group of investors. This would be the first time in 30 years that Stop and Shop didn't have anything to do with the company, and things wouldn't quite go as planned. In 1994, they would attempt to expand Bradley's by adding new locations in New Jersey and New York. They would only open seven locations, but they would go pretty deep in debt by doing so. So by the end of 1994, they were reporting a $210 million loss annually. Things wouldn't get too much better from here. 1995 would prove to be pretty challenging, as they just continued to lose money. So by June of 1995, they announced they would be filing for Chapter 11 Bankruptcy Protection. At this point, there were still 136 operating Bradley's locations. So by 1996, they would start closing and selling off several underperforming locations. This would drop them down to 124 remaining. Ironically, Ames would purchase and convert 14 of these stores. It's odd because Ames was pretty much in the same situation. Anyways, by 1998, Bradley seemed to be back on track, as by that year, they actually posted a profit. They would be approved to exit their Chapter 11 in 1999. So by all accounts, things are looking good for the company. But here's the thing. One of their main competitors, Caldor, would go out of business that year. This would spark a huge increase in sales for Bradley's. As well, customers had less choices to choose from, so they gave Bradley's more business. So here's where things start to take a little bit of a turn. So this has to be one of the boldest decisions I think I've ever seen a company make. Remember, at this point, they were struggling. I mean, they have just exited Chapter 11 bankruptcy just a few months earlier. So they decided to purchase and convert several of the old Caldor locations in the Bradleys. Needless to say, this immediately backfired. And I do mean immediately. As by the following year, Bradley's was completely out of operating money. So with that being said, suppliers stopped getting paid, and well, they stopped shipping product to the stores. At this point, Bradley's was reporting a nearly 5% drop in same-store sales from the previous year. That combined with the bad economy would just prove to be way too much for the company. So on December 26, 2000, they announced they will be filing for Chapter 7 Bankruptcy Protection. And with that, they started a liquidation sale. Their stock price would drop to just 28 cents a share, and they were delisted from the stock exchange. The last day of store operations was March 15, 2001. After that, all remaining 105 locations would be closed. Nearly 10,000 employees would lose their jobs, effectively marking the end for Bradley's. A company executive said that they were just a victim of bad timing. He said they would have succeeded if the economy was in better condition. Even if they would have survived the early 2000s, 
I could still see them being in business today. However, I got a feeling they would kind of be in the same boat as Kmart and Sears. Basically, they would still exist, but not by much. They would just kind of be hanging on for life. Then again, I could be wrong. They might have been bigger than Walmart. I guess no one really knows. It's anyone's guess at this point. But anyway guys, that's all I have for today's video. That's the story of Bradley's. I hope you found this entertaining. And if you guys like this kind of stuff, please subscribe to my channel and please give me a thumbs up. It helps me way more than you probably think. So anyway, I will see you all next time. Thank you for watching.